In this video, you'll learn how to make a macrame plant hanger just like this one with your kit. Each macrame kit includes one wooden ring, eight wooden beads, six long macrame cords, and two short macrame cords. You're also going to need scissors and tape. So our first step is to unbundle all six long cords. Then you're going to find one of the ends of all cords and gather them together. Push all six cords through your wooden ring. And find all of your ends and gather them together. So what you want now is to make sure that the middle of your cords is touching the wooden ring. Next step, grab your tape and tape your wooden ring onto your table or surface that you're working on. This is going to make it a lot easier to work on your macrame planter. Our next step is going to be to create our gathering knot. And for this, you're going to grab one of the short bundles and create a J. Then grab all of your cords, including the short one, and with the long portion of your short cord, the one that you just made a J figure with, you're going to wrap it around all of the cords, including itself. Just make sure that the loop that's on the bottom is still visible. I would suggest wrapping all of your cords around five to six times. Once you're done wrapping your cord, you're going to put the end inside of the loop. This is what's going to help us create a knot that will secure all of our cords together. Pull the top portion of your J in order for your knot to begin to go inside of your barrel. Once your gathering knot is inside of your barrel, Make sure to create extra tension by pulling the bottom portion of your cord and the top portion of your cord. There's still some space between my gathering knot and the edge of my wooden ring, so I'm just going to wiggle it up and then cut the excess of the cord. With that, you've finished your first knot for your plant hanger. Your next step is going to be to grab four cords that are neighboring each other and begin to create five square knots. You're always going to have two center cords, one left and a right. So to start us off, we're going to put our left cord on top of our center and the right cord underneath, creating a sandwich. Next, my right cord that's on the bottom of these loops, I'm gonna pull under and over. And now I'm going to move on to my left. So my left cord that is currently over the loop, I'm going to go over and under. I'm going to pull this all the way out. I like to use my ring and pinky finger to hold my center cords and then push my left and right cords with my index and thumb. Because we started off previously with our left on top, now we're going to start with our right on top of our centering cords. Push the left on the bottom. And then my right cord that is above my centering, I'm going to go over and under this loop. Make sure to push it all the way out. And then the left cord that's currently on the bottom of my centering cords, I'm going to go under and over like this. And then again, using my ring and my pinky finger, I'm holding my center cords and pushing up with my index and my thumb. This V that you see here is our first square knot. So we're going to repeat the process four more times. Because we started off previously with our right hand side, now we're going to move on with our left on top and our right on the bottom of our centering cords. So again, the cord that is on the bottom, so this time our right, is gonna go under and over this loop. And we're gonna push that all the way out. And then our left cord that is currently on the top, we're gonna push 
push over and under. And once again, we tighten. Remember that you're always alternating from left on top to right on top. So in this case, we're gonna start with our right on top, left on bottom. Our right cord that's on the top is gonna go over and under. And our left cord that's on the bottom is under and over in these loops. And we tighten. That is our second square knot. For our third, we're gonna start with our left on top, right on bottom. Because our right is on the bottom, we're gonna go under and over our loop. And because our left is on top, we're gonna go over and under our loop. And once again, tighten. Repeat this process until you have five complete square knots. In order to count your square knots, you're counting these V shapes. So that would be one, two, three square knots. For square knot number four, we're starting with our left on top, right on bottom. Loop our right under and over, and our left over and under these loops. And once again, tighten. For our fifth and final square knot, we're starting with our left on top, right on bottom. You know how this goes. <laughs> so we're pulling our right under and over, and our left over and under, and we tighten. So remember, that was just half of our fifth square knot. So now we go right on top, left on bottom, right over and under this loop, and our left under and over, and then we tighten. There we go, we have our five square knots, so now we're gonna move on with our next set of four chords. I'm gonna to try to pick out some that are neighboring each other again, and we're just gonna repeat this process. So I'm just setting the ones that I just made aside. Remember we have our two center chords, our right and our left. This time I'm gonna start with my right on top, left on bottom. My right chord is gonna go over and under the loop. And because my left is on the bottom, I'm going under and over on that loop. And we tighten. So remember that we alternate. So because we started with our right on top, now it's left on top first to create the second half of our square knot. So again, remember that each group of four chords is going to have five square knots each. So if you got your square knot locked down, you're going to do your five for the set of four chords, move on to the following, and then jump into the next step. And if you still need more time to review our square knots, that's totally fine. I've just left these playing on real time so you're able to follow along. But remember that the most important things are to know how to count your square knots, which are the little V's that show up, and also remember to alternate from left on top for one side and then right on top for the other. At this point I have one, two, And I'm just gonna move my tape a little bit further up just so we can see the hand movements for the last half portion of our final square knot for this section. So we're gonna count one, two, three, four, five V's, which means we're done with this section. You can see they're about the same size with the one we 
just finished up. So our next step is to set those aside, grab our last four chords, make sure we know which one our centering chords are. We're gonna start with our left on top, sandwich the right on bottom. The right is underneath, so I'm pulling under and over that loop, and our left, left sorry, is on top, so we're going over and under, and then we tighten. So by now, we should know that we have to repeat this process in order for us to have our five square knots for this section. Okay, so we finished up our five square knots. One, two, three, four, five. But I just want to show you what you would need to do in case you accidentally make too many knots. So here's half of my sixth one. It would be six. So all you have to do is you just pull that portion, unravel your cords, and then in case you need it, you can tighten. I'm going to bring down my three groups with my five beautiful square knots and by now you should have your wooden ring, your gathering knot, and then three groups of five square knots each. For our next step we're going to do something called crossover square knot. So I believe the best way to organize this is to have our wooden ring pointing up and our three groups of chords making somewhat of a T. I'm going to grab these two right chords and two left chords from the center of the T. And what I'm trying to do is measure out seven inches from the bottom of the square knot to that portion of the chords. If you don't have a ruler available, you can also measure it with your hands. I'm using two palms as a reference. The two inner chords are going to become my center chords. And then we're always going to have our left hand side and right hand side. I'm starting with my left over my center chords and then my right under. So my right that's under is going under and over that loop. And then my left hand side that's over is going over and under that loop. We don't have to wiggle this all the way up. Remember that that's why we used our ruler or the palms of our hands to figure out that space. So now we're just gonna do the second half of our square knot. So right on top, left on bottom. Excuse me. There we go. So left, that's on the bottom, of going under and over, and then right over and under. Again, we're trying to keep that seven inch space right there. I'm 
going to create another crossover knot by using the two right chords of the center of my T and then the two left chords of the right portion of my T. Remember, we have to create our center chords and then all we're doing is creating another square knot. So, this time I'm using my left on top, so I'm pulling left over and under the loop, and then my right, since it's on the bottom, we're going over and under. Remember we want to have about a 7 inch space between the bottom of the square knots and the top of our crossover knot. And all I did is I'm using the one that I created previously as a reference for that distance. And here I'm just completing my crossover knot. So this part here gets a little tricky, so I want you to go and put your wooden rod facing up again. Then the two left hand chords of the left portion of my T and the two right hand chords of the right portion of my T are the ones that we're going to have to join. So I'm just going to flip this around and this part is really important because I don't want my chords to get all tangled. So I'm going to make sure that I know which ones are my center chords. Again, I'm leaving a 7 inch gap or two palm size gap. We're starting with our left on top, right on bottom, right chord goes under and over the loop, and then left chord goes over and under. Again, we don't have to smush it all the way up. I'm using my two palms as a reference. And then I'm just bringing down the other crossover knots that I've made, just so I know how far down they need to be want your chords to be somewhat tense and then I'm just gonna finish my crossover knot which is basically a square knot y'all but we're creating diagonals and the diagonals are gonna make a lot more sense in this next portion okay just to recap so we have our wooden ring our gathering knot our five square knots two palms worth of space or seven inches worth of space then we have our first set of crossover knots. And now we're going to do our second group of crossover knots. So what I'm doing is creating the diagonals that I mentioned previously. And to do that, we're going to grab the right two chords of one part and the left two chords of another. I'm using my two palms as reference for those seven inches. If you have your ruler, go ahead and use that. So now that we've identified our center chords, we're gonna start with our left on top, right on bottom, right under and over the sleeve, and left over and under. Remember, we don't need to tighten anything. And then we're gonna do our final portion for this crossover knot. So I'm starting with my right above, Sandwich with my left under, and there we go. Now, we're going to focus on our second crossing. So I'm identifying my center chords, again starting with my left on top, right on bottom, trying to tense those center chords. I just want to say that the only difference between a square knot and a crossover is that for my crossover, I'm using diagonals as opposed to using four neighboring chords, if that makes sense. For our final crossover knot, we have a similar situation that we did before. So what I'm going to do, because I can join those two, I'm going to flip my macrame around. Again, this is a very important step because if not, your chords are going to get all tangled. We're identifying our center chords. 
backwards. Starting with left on top, right on bottom, you know the drill, under and over, over and under. You don't need to tense, I'm just using the, all of those crossover knots that are underneath as a reference. But again, we want it to be 7 inches from the previous set of crossover knots. Final step, you are using your final short chord that was in the kit to create a J, and we're going to create one last gathering knot. So the same knot that we did above, remember we need our loop at the bottom, one end pointing up, and we're going to start wrapping the rest around all of our chords. Same as the top one, you can do five, six loops around. I'm just going to speed this up a little bit for sake of time. And once you have your five to six wraps around, you're going to put the end into that bottom loop from our J. You're going to tighten and pull the top portion up so you have that knot in the center of your barrel. There we go. And then you're going to tighten both ends. Also cut the rest of the excess cords as long as short as you like. And this is our final result.